Yep, it snowed last night. Sometimes it'll do this right up until June. But, uh, it's a little cold. Not bad. And it ain't snowing right now. But I'm glad I went to Bozeman yesterday because the roads would be horrendous right now. All right, let's get busy on the clay. Well, it's another day, and uh, I'm going to go back on the clay here. Um, just going to do uh, clean-up work around it, and whatever hits my eye at the moment. I'm going to cut down on the complexity of the shield um, a little bit. I'm going to still have feathers on it, but I don't know if I'm going to have the cloth uh, on the shield. And uh, that I will decide when I get going into it here. I'll let the uh, clay speak to me as I work on it. What I'm doing is that before I put the feathers on, I want to get uh, the design down on this uh, shield. And I'm going to use this uh, rubber tip tool, this clay shaper tool, to give me uh, lines. It's, it's got a flat end on the tool. And I'm just going to put lines like uh, that were, you know, would be painted on the shield. So that it makes it easier for the uh, patina guy to uh, get the design exactly right every time. Uh, so that he's got lines to paint within. Or I want to put uh, circles, so I just I think I only put about four, maybe five feathers on this. I'll decide here in a second. take a little clay now and fill in underneath that feather. The other place I need to fill in would be between the quill and the uh, shield. That's going to be a little more difficult to hide. I'm just going to put a little texture inside the circle so they stand out. Because not everybody's going to want a colored copy of this bronze, so I've got to indicate a different uh, color by a different texture. There. And this uh, tool has just a little bit of a serrated edge on it on the bottom edge and I just use that to uh, make the texture and then where it gets outside the circle I just uh, 
use this rubber tool to smooth it out and blend it. There we go. The key to filling in is just not overdo it. Try to do it as minimal, minimal as possible. This tip of the feather is probably just a little too thin to come out of the mold properly without having to have it re-sculpted. So I'm going to uh, thicken it up a little bit, give it some strength with just a little piece of clay here. And again, using a clay shaper tool here, I'm just going to blend it in. See, the less they have to cut apart in the mold making, the less costly it's going to be for you in the long run. And the less costly it is for you, the bigger the savings are that you can pass on to your client. The more likely that you're going to sell the, the clay or the bronze when it's finished. If you make it so expensive that you can't sell it, it doesn't do you or the gallery any good. Just sitting on the shelf. There we go. I think that's good. Just need to push it on that feather a little bit. Fur, I don't think he'd want to... If he's sneak up, sneaking up on a camp, he doesn't want uh, clawed paws clanking against any rocks or trees or things like that. He'd probably want as soft a sound as possible, and you can't get that with a paw with claws on it. I mean, it looks good, but uh, to my mind, it doesn't make uh, practical. So I'm just making the uh, ends of the legs clawless for that reason. And I could be completely, totally wrong, but I'm just putting in the uh, hair texture now on that leg. this little metal tool that I got from Sculpture Depot. And it's really nice for doing this. It's got a little rounded end on this one end here and a sharp end on this end so it makes it really nice for just getting in here and putting the textures in. Give just a little bit of a fur texture at the edge of the skin by digging into the uh, clay a little bit and showing a little bit of a surface difference uh, from the inside clay or inside of the wolf skin to the fur. I know I talk a lot about cost, but it's something you have to constantly think about when you're creating a bronze. Is the cost that it's going to end up being producing what you're producing. There, it gives a nice little look to it. Alright, I'm going to rethink my stand on the tail. I was just going through while I was eating my lunch, pictures of tails of the, the wolf. And uh, they aren't as big as what I thought. Uh, they barely get past the uh, middle of the uh, back leg in length. So. be too small still. I just don't want it to overpower what I've sculpted. Okay, I'm going to take a stiff uh, paintbrush. And again, this is an artist's paintbrush that I got from an artist friend of mine that 
no longer use it because at, over time it rounds itself and uh, it doesn't serve the purpose that he got the brush for. And it's, uh, he either throws it away or just uh, puts it aside and stores it. But, uh, I asked him if I could have a couple and he said sure. So it didn't cost me anything. Well, it's starting to get there. Um, just about done. Um, I'm going to work on uh, this hand and arm tomorrow. Um, work a little more on the texture of the fur. And uh, work around the ankles here with the uh, legging as well. And then I'll start uh, cleaning up the horse and then start... Uh, putting whatever design I, I decide to come up with for the uh, base and, uh, and we'll be done so see you guys tomorrow and uh, another day of sculpting good night